Lord Jesus, you are the well of life, and in your light we see light. So shine your light into our lives that your word may become for us the wisdom of God. Amen. Have you ever had an epiphany? On a minor scale, students might have a light bulb moment when they suddenly discover a method or connection in their studies. Others can pinpoint the exact time when they met the person with whom they wish to spend the rest of their life. An epiphany is a bit deeper, it's like a remarkable, well that's pretty deep, I wouldn't want to downplay that, but it's like a remarkable scientific discovery or a moral awakening that changes behaviour, the sudden dawning of a new reality, the recognition of being in a fresh place. May I suggest that the events in the liturgical season of Epiphany bear witness to a truth that puts lesser epiphanies into the shade. For this is a season of epiphanies, of revelation, declaring the wisdom of God in the identity, the character, and the mission of Jesus. It's a season of firsts, encounters and events that showcase who Jesus is and what he's about. We began with the arrival of the Magi, signifying his priestly kingship that would extend to all people. And this was followed by the extraordinary harmony of heaven and earth demonstrated in his baptism. The voice of the Father saying, this is my son, the beloved, a divine son who yet fully embraces our humanity. And then in his first sermon in Nazareth, Jesus owned this identity, referring the messianic Hebrew prophecies to himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then having called the first disciples to himself, they together arrive at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It's like a story it's a story like all the encounters in John's Gospel that is multi-layered with immediate interest, yet lingering meaning, no doubt like the very fine wine that was left till last. The Apostle John concludes his account, this was the first of his signs. He thus revealed his glory and the disciples put their trust in him. Each of the seven miraculous signs in John show a meaning beyond themselves. They're not mere episodes, but are revelatory about the one who performed them. And on a surface level, we notice the presence, the mere presence of Jesus at this wedding. It was clearly a full-on party, and he joined in. This is no surprise for all of the narratives of his ministry in Galilee and Judea portray a man of deep emotion, tearful, angry, joyful, and of a man who offered life-giving friendship across social barriers. Jesus continues today to be present in the joys and sorrows that we experience. He walks alongside and he understands. And there is tenderness, as in his gentle remonstration towards his mother Mary, which our translation probably fails to really pick up. Think of the later time when Jesus was on the cross and he looked at Mary and John and said, woman, behold your son. Jesus continues to show tender compassion in accepting our foibles, knowing our passions and our weaknesses, the limitations of 
our imperfect understanding. He's also generous. I mean, seven stone jars, huge stone jars. Chateau Lafitte, it was nothing less than that. But he's generous with his time and provision. There's more than a hint of consecration in the command to fill these water jars, in the offering and in the distribution. And just as Elijah proclaimed the word of the Lord to the widow of Zarephath, promising a provision that would suffice for each day and never run out, so this miracle is a sign of the overflowing generosity of the banquet in heaven. The best is yet to come. I was once the custodian for a while of, uh, of uh, some communion elements that were made, um, a pattern and wafer and a cross that were made in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. And for having had them made, the priest was thrown into solitary confinement. But when he came out, he offered communion. Uh, a friendly guard had managed to find them some wine. And I remember his son telling me many years later that the wine never ran out. It's a taste of what is to come. Even in the midst of darkness, Jesus is there. He thus revealed his glory. A foundational narrative for the people of Israel was the journey through the wilderness and the cloud that showed the glory of God over the Ark of Covenant. The glory of God was now personified in Jesus. And it's hard to overstate the significance of John's words. He thus revealed his glory. That's why he could begin his gospel. We have beheld his glory, that of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. So no wonder the disciples put their faith in him. I wonder if you're able to echo that statement yourselves. In his book, The God of Surprises, the Jesuit writer Gerard Hughes outlines Ignatian practices of scriptural meditation, and he describes a very religious young man who was learning about prayer. And he asked this man to picture Jesus in the story of the, of the wedding in Cana. And the man could only envisage Jesus sat on a hard-backed throne, frowning on the celebration. Whether through too much religion or too little, whatever you have heard or absorbed about Jesus, are you able to see him for who he really is and to hear his invitation to put your trust in him? Faith may come through an epiphany moment, a flash of light as experienced by Saul, whose conversion we celebrated just a few days ago. Or it might be the gradual dawning of a new day. I encourage you to take time in developing your own spiritual inquiry. In a few weeks' time, we begin Lent. There'll be services of Compline, in this chapel on a Wednesday evening. And on Tuesdays, we're starting a series of five evening discussions, a diocesan initiative called Come and See. The words of Jesus to the first disciples, there'll be more details to follow. How are you, though, developing your spiritual eyes? How might you better recognize the presence of God in your own life? and how Jesus is turning water into wine for you. And how might you be able better to share his grace and truth with those around you? But for now, as we approach the sacrament of the Eucharist, the effective sign of our communion with God and each other in Christ, let us ponder anew the glory revealed in Cana and the miracle of what Richard Wilbur describes as God's sweet excess that can, without depletion, overflow. Amen.